In our last lesson, we talked about rectangles and cubes. In this lesson, we're going to look at solid figures of a circular base. And there are three different kinds we're going to look at. We're going to look at the sphere, the cone, and these are exactly the same. They are cylinders. So the last two are the same. It's just a cylinder kind of turned over. Uh, the parts are going to be important. So for all of these, uh, they're going to have very similar parts. We're going to need to identify the radius. And I'm going to put this here on the side. And for most of them, a height as well. And the reason we, we need the radius is because when we're talking about solid shapes, we need we are using an area formula for the base. And you may not remember this from seventh grade, but the area for a circle, area is equal to pi r squared. So this is for a circle. So you're going to keep seeing a lot of these terms as we're looking at the volume for these different shapes. But let me pause for a second and just show you the parts that you're going to need to know. So for a sphere, you're going to need the center because that's going to help you find the radius. So here's the circular base. You're going to look in the center. And from that center, you're going to find the radius. And that's the halfway point from the center to the outer edge is a radius. And in this example, our units would have been in inches, so it would have been inches to the third power, because we have inches there. Let's go to the cone for a second, and the parts are you definitely gonna need. You're gonna need the center, because that's gonna help you find the radius, and you're also going to need the height. So height is easy, it's going from the tippy tip to the base, that is your height. And you're also going to look for your circular base from your center to the end of that circle, that is your radius. So you're going to need that too. In our cylinder, and you can, usually you see it right side up with a circular base, but notice that the base and the top are exactly the same. So it's okay if you don't see the numbers at the bottom base because it is exactly congruent to the top. But again, you're going from the center to the out part of your circle, that would be your radius. And on the side, you're gonna see a height, going from the bottom to the top. Sometimes they just tip the cylinder over. Guess what? This is still a height. We can still use that side length as a height and we can still use this circle on both ends for the base. And you're still identifying your radius. So again, for both of these, you have a center, a radius, and a height. Do not get confused if they move it side to side, um, if they tilt it over. So, and don't forget again to look at your units. In these cases, they're always gonna be to the third power. So do not forget to add those to your final answers. So let's jump over and do some more work with this. Let's just do a really quick raised problem. We want to know which of these is true, which statement. Uh, this is a geometry unit. And the information is actually, all our information is in our multiple choice selections. We're going to have to read each selection because that's where our information is. I'm not going to recopy all of it. So my strategy is going to read and eliminate false statements. That's, that's my strategy. Can I eliminate anything that is false? Okay, so here's our first one. A solid figure is a three-dimensional object. We talked about this before. This one is absolutely true. A solid figure has a length, a width, and a height. They take up space. Uh, so looking at the second part, a solid figure has a width, a depth, and a height. This is also true. A lot of times they think of this part 
like going back out as the depth, how deep it is. So we use that term a lot and the height is still, is also still there. Um, third statement, a cone is a type of solid figure. Yeah, that's true. A cone is a type of solid figure. So that is true. And that leaves us with D, all these statements are true. So in this case, I can't eliminate anything at all. That is a true statement. Let's move to our next set with our notes. And these are going to be some fill in the blanks. So you're just going to jot these down as we go through and I'm going to just share my thinking as I'm going over them. So here's the very first one. Uh, the 3D shapes we, we work with will involve circles. Remember the components of a circle. Uh, so again, you're going from the center to the outside. That is your radius. They might give you a line that goes from one edge to the other. That is a diameter. We want half of that. So if they give you a circle and they give you this part and this part is nine, for all our problems of volume, we want from the middle to the edge. So you have to actually break that in half. Half the diameter is gonna give us our radius. All right, so let's fill in these little blanks over here. The blank is the amount of space a circle takes up, all right? Talking about space, so that is area. The area is the amount of space a circle takes up. It can be found using the formula, and I gave this one to you earlier. Area is equal to pi r squared. And you may be thinking, how does Sarah remember this? <laughs> this is really easy. So for circumference, I use pies. So Cherry pies, delicious. So this is a circumference formula, but I want to know the distance around. And then I say, apple pies are too. And I swear to you, that is how I remember the formula for area of circles. By just saying cherry pie, delicious, apple pies are too. Works for me, it just sticks in my head, I always remember it. The formula uses R, which is the radius. It is also two times the diameter. Okay? So two times the radius is equal to the diameter. So again, if they give you a diameter, just divide it by two. That's all you would have to do. You would just take your diameter, divide by two, and that can give you your radius. Hit pause so you can jot this down into your notes. And you're gonna have something very, very similar for your checkpoint today. It's gonna to be a note section like this where you're gonna to have to try and think of what fills in the blank. So let's think about um, what words make the most sense. Let's try this one. A sphere is a special type of shape. Again, it looks like a ball, like a basketball, which is a set of equal circles around the center. So it's like a whole bunch of circles, 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 circles. So we see a circular base and it'll be like a whole bunch of them. Okay, so again, we have the center over here. All right, so let's fill this out. The volume of a sphere or the amount of space the sphere takes up can be found using the formula. And here is the formula, you're not gonna know this. Four thirds times pi radius cubed. All right, so this is the formula, um, and you can check our YouTube page for another video where I actually will share how this formula really works. Uh, it does, it is something that's gonna be on a lot of your reference sheets, and it does look a little funky because it has pi in it, it has exponents in it, and it has an improper fraction, but I promise you it is not gonna be that challenging. You just have to take it one, one step at a time. Let's go, we have another blank. Blank is the radius of a sphere because it's the distance from the center to the edge. So blank is the radius. We're gonna use the letter R. R is the radius of a sphere because it's from the center to the edge. So that's how we're gonna use the letter R. The formula blank, which is the blank multiplied by itself three times. So look at your formula. What is multiplied by itself three times? The radius, R. So the formula needs the radius, which is 
I said it, radius multiplied by itself three times. Or r to the third power. Okay, so I had to use some thinking here to figure out what some of these words are going to be. So hit pause so you can jot this down in your notes. In your checkpoint, you're going to have to fill in the blanks for two more shapes, the cone and the cylinder. So please make sure you're looking at your notes to figure those parts out um, to be able to fill in those blanks with the words that make the most sense. Again, we're just trying to see what you know and what you can figure out. And it's going to take time to figure some of this is brand new content. So if you don't get it right the first time, that's okay. Math Marvels, this is what we're here for. Your teachers are here to help. But try and use logic and try your best with what you know about the shapes from this lesson. Uh, that's it for today. We're going to hit pause and I will see you in the next lesson, Math Marvels. Take care.